Okay, so this is going to be a lesson on proof for codes, um, but uh, I think maybe we'd better start with a little bit of uh, a discussion and a little bit of even sort of philosophy to, to, to put in place uh, uh, what we're going to do here. So we're going to be looking at trees with vertex set 1 on up to n. Uh, but for, for simplicity, if, if you have an edge between vertex i and vertex j, let's say this edge is always going to be denoted by the two element set consisting of i and j. So then if I, if I tell you the vertices and I tell you which vertices are adjacent to one another, you already know what the names of the edges will be, right? Um, and in this setting, we can now ask some kind of natural questions like, for instance, how many trees have a vertex set one up to four? So let me just, uh, let's just look at this. Let's look at trees with vertex set one, two, three, four. Right, so again, the idea is I'm, uh, I'm gonna be treating, I, I'm gonna be treating the edge between an I and a J as, as, as already named the set I comma, the set, the doubleton, consisting of I and J, I comma J. And um, so, when you go to draw such a tree now, you don't really need to label the edges. Those are forced. And now we can just count. So, so how many trees are there with vertex set one, two, three, four? Um, and uh, let, let's just do. So I'm, I'm going to do this in maybe a little bit of a efficient way. So I could make a tree that looks like this. I could have a one vertex of degree three, and then you're going to have three vertices of degree one. That's possible. Uh, if you do do this, you can put you can arrange that the degree three vertex be either one or two or three or four, and those are all going to be different graphs. Right? I'm, I'm not asking about isomorphism right now. I'm just asking about how many trees have vertex at one, two, three, four. So I can have uh, this, this is K13. I can have K13 where one is the vertex of degree three, or I can um, <clears throat> I can do that with two or three or four. Uh, obviously you can't have a vertex of degree four or more. You, know, you can't have two vertices of degree three. So if you if you don't even have one vertex of degree, so if you, okay, so if you, um, I can't have a four or higher and I can't have two threes. If I have one three, you're gonna be one of these trees. If I don't have any vertices of degree three or more, then I'm just a path. And, uh, Let's see, I could put a one here and a two here, and then I have two choices, right? I could do uh, three, four, or I could do one and two and four and three. Uh, and you can see, as soon as you've picked the labels of the two ends of the paths, you're gonna be left with two choices. So I could do um, I'm going to sort of do this a little bit efficiently. Oops. So hopefully you can kind of see what I mean here. Um, <clears throat> uh, Again, if I've told you the, the labels on the two ends of the paths, which of the two vertices I, I have either, which of the, which two of the set from the set one, two, three, four, you're putting on the ends, then you're gonna have two choices. So I'm gonna have two possibilities where one and two are the ends, and two where one and three are the ends, and two where one and four are the ends, and so on. So you can see that at least with what I've drawn, I can kind of quickly count the number of trees with vertex set one, two, three, four. I'm gonna have what? <clears throat> well, I'm going to have four of this type, and I'm going to have 12 down here. That's a total of 16. So there, uh, there are 16 in total. And, uh, and in fact, our big theorem here is, well, maybe I, I should, sorry, maybe I'm mis-selling it. So that's the point of this was to get the right ideas in place. Um, 
One of the big things we're going to prove is uh, a formula that generalizes this. So generalizes this. So in fact, the number of trees with a vertex set um, one, two, on up to n. This is always equal to n raised to the power n minus two. This is for n greater than or equal to two. Uh, so for n at least two, the number of trees with vertex set one up to n is always going to be n to the n minus two. And you can see that aligns with our calculation here. We had uh, one on up to four. So the number of spanning trees should be four to the second power of that. And that is indeed 16. So, um, so that's this uh, 16 total that we got here. So we are going to learn to count the number of trees with vertex set uh, one on up to n. But I, I, I should not be leaving you with the impression that that is the main point of this exercise. Um, in fact, what we're going to do is a far more interesting thing. We're going to develop uh, a certain bijection. We're going to develop a bijection between trees with vertex set one up to n and certain sequences where the, uh, the, the elements from your sequence are always going to be numbers between 1 and n. So what we're going to be doing is, uh, and let me just, yeah, let me just grab an erase. So this is, this, what I've told you here is kind of the corollary, but, uh, but it's really not the point. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be developing a bijection between trees with vertices one on up to n and sequences of length n minus 2 where every element is and every term of the sequence is a number between 1 and n. Uh, uh, so I could say over the alphabet or with, with elements in the set one on up to n. Right? So for instance, with my trees uh, on, on, on four vertices, so over here I'd have, you know, those trees on four vertices that I was counting before. And over here I'd be looking at sequences that are just... Uh, Oh, 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 n minus 2. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I always want to say n minus 1 when I say trees, because trees on n vertex graphs have n minus 1 edges. But we're do doing sequences of length n minus 2 with elements from 1 on up to n. So here, in the, in the special case that we were just doing, on the left we'd have trees with vertex at 1 on up to 4. Uh, and, and over here on the right we would have, what? Well, we'd have sequences of length 4 minus 2. So that's just two term sequences, two elements, an ordered pair. And the <coughs> excuse me. The elements in that order of pair have to be numbers between uh, numbers 1 on up to 4, 1 2 3 or 4. So you can do you can do anything you want. You're allowed to repeat. You don't have to be in order or anything. You have that means you have four choices for the first term and four choices for the second term, and that gives you your 16, right? So you're going to have um, you're going to have some sequences such as um, two three or four comma four or one two and so on. Um, but uh, but of course, if I want to count all sequences of length n minus two, where you have n choices for each term, well, that's easy. That's n to the n minus two. So that's where this, um, this count is going to come from. But, but, but in fact, what I want to emphasize is that really the beauty here is actually in the bijection itself. And this is a kind of a thing you may not have seen anywhere before. Um, the, uh, uh, the thing that we're doing here, finding a natural bijection between two families that don't look obviously connected, is, is really meaningful because it does provide a connection between those. So suddenly, I mean, you can if you can count these, then you can count those and vice versa. But also you get finer grain information. So 
all sorts of other questions you would like to know about, okay, how many trees do I have with a certain degree sequence? Well, you can answer that very easily now by way of this bijection because it's going to turn out that you can, you can read off the degrees very easily from the, from the sequence. So this, this bijection, these bijections, they're found in lots of different places. So mathematicians care about all kinds of different objects. In many instances, a first step toward understanding a, a, an object or a class of objects is just trying to count them. And in, in numerous cases, we've found bijections between seemingly different looking things, and those bijections help us understand them. They, they build a bridge between those two different worlds and help us understand one object in terms of the other. And many times, you know, one side can really shed a lot of light on what's going on on the other side. So um, in this case, you know, in this case, sequences of length n minus 2 with elements in 1 on up to n, well, those are very simply structured objects. I mean, there's just no restriction, right? Each, each coordinate, you just get to make a choice. So they're very easy to count. We know it's, it's, uh, it, it's very transparent what that, what that collection of objects is. The fact that we have a natural bijection between those things and trees suddenly gives us a similar easy way of, of getting a grip on our trees. And that's a really, really powerful thing. So it's, um, it's uh, yeah, I feel like this is not the first thing you see in graph theory, but this is a, this is a, a, a really a fundamental idea in, in, in combinatorics is building bijections, building natural bijections between different sets. I mean, of course, if you have two sets of things that just have the same size, then there exists a bijection between them because they have the same size. That's what it means to have the same size. But in instances where we have natural structured objects and we have a natural bijection between them, that's powerful because it allows us to understand one side in terms of the other. So that's going to be our game here. We're going to be finding a bijection between trees and sequences of uh, trees with vertex at 1 on up to n and sequences of length n minus 2 where the, uh, the, the elements of the sequence are uh, numbers from 1 up to n. So that's going to be our game. Now, in fact, what we're going to do... <clears throat> um, no, okay. So let me, let me, let me, just, uh, let me just kind of get to it. Okay, so that's going to be our game. We're going to look to build a bijection between, again, trees with vertex at 1 on up to n and these sequences. And what we're going to do is uh, uh, follow this beautiful idea due to Proofer. And it's, uh, it's a two-step process. So we're going to describe this bijection by taking a tree and showing how to turn that into a sequence, then taking sequences and showing how to turn them into trees, and then we're going to show that, in fact, those two things that we've just described are just inverses of one another, and, uh, and that'll establish our theorem. Okay, so, um, so here on the page you see our, our proof for encoding, and um, maybe I'll just sort of read this out and say a couple words. So for one thing, um, on the first slide there, I was talking only about trees with vertex set 1 on up to n. Well, that is really what I care about. I mean, of course, the names of the vertices don't matter that much. Um, and it's convenient to use 1 on up to n because you know how many vertices there are. There are n of them. Um, but what's going to happen here is that, although that's what I just what I'm wanting to get to in the end, in the course of our operations, we're going to be looking at trees that you can get from these trees with vertex at 1 on up to n by deleting some vertices. And you might not start out deleting vertex n. You might delete one somewhere in the middle or at the start or somewhere else. And so I'm going to end up wanting to consider trees with, with different vertex sets. And so, it, in fact, the way that we're going to describe this algorithm is there's going to be just some fixed set s. And it's going to be a set of size n. And n is always going to be at least 2. And s is going to be the set that's going to be the vertex set for our tree or S is going to be the set of elements that we're allowed to use when we're making our sequences. So that's our, um, uh, so anyway, so it's, it's not one on up to N, mainly because I'm gonna need to consider other, other names, even if, I, even if that's what I care about in the end. So the, the set S is always gonna be our vertex set or the element set for our, for our sequence. 
And um, yeah, okay, and that, now I'll describe the encoding. It's really easy. Um, so we're, we're gonna be given a tree with vertex set S. The, um, but S is always a subset of integers. I, um, I should have said, uh, I, I always want S to be a subset of integers. You could take real numbers, but it doesn't make any difference. So S is always gonna be a subset of integers. And, uh, and we're gonna lean on that ordering. So the idea is the, the following. So we're just gonna do one step after another. At step, uh, at, at the first step, what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at all of the, <clears throat> uh, look at all the leaf vertices of our tree, we're gonna delete the, the smallest one, right? So again, the, the vertices themselves are integers. So we're just gonna be deleting the smallest leaf vertex. And we're gonna, we're now gonna form us, we're gonna be forming a sequence as we go. What are we gonna do? Well, we're gonna, we're gonna make our sequence. So we're gonna delete the smallest leaf, but we don't, we're not writing down the name of that leaf. We're gonna write down the name of its, of its neighbor. So we're going to delete a leaf and we're going to write down, we're going to delete the smallest leaf and write down the name of its unique neighbor. And we're just going to carry on like that. So then the second step, okay, we're still looking at a tree. There's still some smallest leaf vertex. We are going to delete that and we're going to write down the name of its unique neighbor. And that's going to be in the, <clears throat> excuse me, in the second position. So let's just, let's just do an easy example. So there's a simple little tree with five vertices. Again, at the first, oh, I should say, um, so we're gonna keep doing that operation. We keep deleting leaves until we get down to two vertices. So we're gonna, um, oh, yeah, I guess I, I, I see that here in my write-up of this, I didn't really emphasize that. I mean, it, I guess it's clear because there are only n minus two steps, but. Um, but we, we stop, and let me just write that here. We'll, we'll stop when T has uh, just two vertices left. Um, right, so we're not, we're, we're not completely going down to nothing. We're just going down to, the, to a two vertex tree. So again, we're gonna take our input tree and we're gonna form a sequence of, of integers. What we do at each stage, we delete the, the smallest leaf and we write down the name of its neighbor. And, and we're just gonna build our sequence one term at a time. So we, we start, you know, we're first we'll fill in the first position, then the second, then the third, then the fourth, and so on. And we're gonna stop when our tree gets down to just two vertices. So, uh, so let's do, okay. So here's our, here's our initial tree. Let's do the encoding. So the leaves of this, tree are three, four, and five. Three is the smallest. So I am going to be deleting the vertex three. Not sure how best to do this. I'm gonna be deleting the vertex three and I'm gonna be writing down the name of its neighbor, which is one. So now I'm to a tree that no longer has the vertex three. <clears throat> you know, sorry, I, I've got a better move here. Let me just... Um, Maybe I can sort of leave it in orange. I don't know if that's better or not. So the blue is the current tree. Three is showing you what we've deleted. Okay, so now we're again looking at the blue tree. We're going to look for the smallest leaf vertex. Now that's the vertex one. So we're gonna be deleting the ver vertex one from our tree and we're gonna be writing down the name of, of the neighbor of one and that's two. So the next stage, what I'm gonna do is delete one and I'll be writing down the name of the neighbor of one, which is two. Good. Okay, next up, I um, again, I have a tree with at least three vertices. I am going to look for the smallest leaf vertex. In this case, that's four. I'm gonna delete four and I'm gonna write down the name of the neighbor which is again two. <clears throat> uh, 
and now I'm down to uh, just a two vertex tree, two and five, and now I'm just gonna stop. So that tree that I had, it three, one, two, four, five, so that's a little five vertex tree with vertex at one on up to five, that's gonna be encoded using the sequence one comma two comma two. So one, two, two. Um, let me, um, let me make a quick observation about this proofer encoding that's kind of an easy one. I claim that um, I claim that when you are doing this proofer encoding, it's very easy to tell the leaf vertices from the non-leaf vertices, right? When you look at this sequence that we've just formed, one comma two comma two, well, one and two, those are precisely the non-leaf vertices of the graph. Um, right, the, the leaves of our graph were three and four and five, and those ones do not appear in our sequence. On the other hand, the non-leaf vertices were one and two, and those ones both do. And in fact, that, that happens every time. It's pretty easy to see. If you have a leaf vertex, well, you can, you can never write down its name, right? You, you only write down the name of a vertex when you delete its unique neighbor, but you never delete down to just one vertex, right? If you, if you were deleting the neighbor, if you had a vertex who was a leaf of the initial tree, you'd never be deleting its neighbor because that would be making that an isolated vertex. And we always delete a leaf vertex and we always keep at least uh, two vertices in our tree. So we never delete down to one vertex. So if I have a leaf vertex, it, it um, uh, I, I, well, I simply can never write down its name. On the other hand, suppose you have a non-leaf vertex. Well, if you have a non-leaf vertex, I'm, I, I'm claiming that its name has to be written down. Well, look, you're, you're gonna be modifying your tree over time. Eventually, that non-leaf vertex is gonna have to, it's, initially its degree is gonna be two or more. At some point in time, I'm, I mean, we're deleting vertices over and over and over again, but we only ever delete leaves. So at some point in time, the degree of that vertex is going to have to drop from whatever it was to something smaller. And at that point in time, that it's dropping because we're deleting a leaf vertex that's adjacent to it. That's the only way its degree can drop. So if you have a vertex that starts out, say, at degree three, well, again, we only ever delete leaves. So it's not, it can't leave the tree until its, until its degree drops down to one. So if we watch this vertex through our process, well, you know, at the end of the process, we're only left with a, a tree that has two vertices of degree one. So this vertex that we had that started with degree three, say, its degree is going to have to drop. And again, when its degree drops, it's because you're deleting a leaf that's adjacent to it. And when you do that, you're gonna be writing down its name. So the, the key observation here is, that um, when you do this proofer encoding, the, um, the vertices appearing in the sequence are precisely the non-leaf vertices. Uh, so the observation is that vertices appearing in this sequence are the non-leaf. And I didn't have room to write that very properly, but it's, but it, in fact, but that's if and only if. Um, so the non-leaf vertices will appear, the leaf vertices will not appear. So already we're seeing some, I mean, already you're seeing something valuable about uh, this, this bijection. Namely, uh, um, if you want to look at all the, say all the trees that have the feature that vertices one and two and three are gonna be leaves, well, then you're suddenly, you're looking at, um, you're, you're gonna be looking at, if you wanna look at the encoding, you're gonna be looking at sequences that don't have those uh, three numbers appearing in them. And again, those things are actually very easy to count. So uh, I mean, we're not gonna go long on counting in this class, it's really not our bag, but, um, but just as a hint of why this bijection would be useful, like we yeah, ask maybe uh, when you first see it, okay, it's kind of a curiosity. There are n to the n minus two trees 
with vertex at 1 up to n. Well, that's true, but this bijection has a lot more power to it, and, and that's just some indication of why. Okay, so that was, um, okay, so this is how the encoding works. Again, the encoding is very, very simple. You just you take your tree and you keep plucking off leaves until you get down to just two vertices. And the rule is simple. You always pluck off the leaf with the smallest, uh, the smallest leaf. And you write down the name of its unique neighbor. And you just keep doing that. You're making your sequence first term, second term, third term, and so on. And um, yeah. And then when you get down to two vertices, you stop. You've made a sequence of length n minus 2. All of the elements will be from the set 1 on up to n. And if we, as we've seen, the leaf vertices of your tree are not going to appear in this sequence, and the non-leaf vertices will. Okay, so that's proof for encoding. Let's see proof for decoding. So this obviously has to be somehow the reverse, um, the reverse process. Here again, there's going to be a fixed set, capital S, these are, this is, it's a set of n integers, and that's the set that we're going to be building our graph on. And we're going to be taking a sequence of length n minus 2 uh, with, with elements from s. And we're going to be doing our decoding. And I'll just, oh, well, I'll just read through how this works. It's fairly straightforward. We're, there's there's going to be kind of a marking process. So we're going to keep track. When, it, when a vertex is marked, it means we're kind of ignoring it for the rest of the time. So the, um, I mean, could almost say deleting, but we're, the, the graph that we're going to build in the end has them present. So I don't want to delete them, so instead we'll be using the term marking. But when a vertex is marked, it's kind of ignored for the rest of the time. So, um, so again, for the decoding process, we're going to be given this set capital S. Those are the labels for our vertices. And we're going to be given a sequence of length uh, n minus 2. So the size of s is always n. We're going to be given a sequence of length n minus 2 with elements from s, and we're going to build a, build a tree with vertex set s. And here's how it works. We're going to start with a graph whose vertex set is equal to s and has no edges. And as I said, there's going to be some, some marking of vertices, so a vertex will either count as marked or unmarked. We'll start with everything unmarked. So, um, Let's, let's, let's decode this sequence. So I'll just show you how it works in this case. And I may be sort of leading the witness here a little bit, but I'm going to go ahead and... Um, uh, put my vertices down in the same positions that we had them before. So um, to do proof or decoding, again, now again, our, our set here, the set of vertices, this is for both cases. The set is 1 on up to 5. That was the vertex set of our original tree. And that's the set of, um, that, that's our sort of little universe now. Um, so when we're doing proof or decoding, again, we're going to be taking this sequence that we've got and turning it into a tree. And uh, so again, I'm just we start with a graph where S is the vertex set and has no edges and all of the vertices are unmarked. And now we're going to take steps one after another. At step I, what we're going to do is we're going to look at all of the unmarked vertices uh, <clears throat> that, that do not appear in the, in the tail of our sequence. So um, we're going to be, just, just as when we, when, we, um, when we did our encoding, we were kind of taking the tree and making this tree smaller. So we were kind of like digesting the tree one, one leaf at a time. We're chewing it up. Um, now we're going to start with the sequence of length n minus 2, and we're going to, we're going to, we're going to be looking at the sequence of length n minus 2, and we'll be plucking off the first term and plucking off the next term and, and carrying on. So we'll be shrinking to a smaller sequence as we go, just as we shrunk to a smaller tree. So what we're going to do is at step 1, we're going to be considering the whole sequence, 1, 2, 2. At step 2, we'll, all, we'll, we'll ignore the first term. So we'll just throw off the first term. So another way of thinking about it is at each, at each step here, you're going to take this sequence that you have. You're going to, um, you're going to be focusing on the, the first term of the thing, and you'll be addressing that and then removing it and moving to the smaller one. So how does this work? What we're going to do is we're going to look for the smallest unmarked vertex, which does not appear in, in, the, in what we have of our sequence. 
and that's what that's going to be um, that that's going to be the magic uh, element v. So let's do the first step. So the first step, our sequence is one, two, two. Am I doing this? No. Okay. Anyway, our sequence is one, two, two. I'm looking for the smallest unmarked unmarked uh, vertex here that's not in not in our sequence. So we have one and two and two. So I'm looking for the smallest unmarked thing not appearing there. Well, you have ones and twos. The smallest unmarked thing is a three. And what am I going to do? Well, I'm going to... Three is going to be a leaf. Um, if you should be guessing that the... You know, if I'm hoping to get back this... Um, <clears throat> this tree that I had before, the leaves had better be three, four, five. So three is going to be a leaf vertex, and it's going to be adjacent to one because one was the first thing in my sequence. So three is going to get an edge to one. And at that point, I'm going to put a little mark next to three. And that means that we are done thinking about three. Three is no longer under consideration for the rest of the algorithm. As I say, I don't want to delete three. I mean, I'm trying to build a, a, a tree at the end of the day that's going to have three as a vertex, so I don't want to delete it. I'm keeping it around, but I'm marking it. And as soon as we mark it, it means, well, you know, it's going to be a leaf. It's, it's going to be ignored for the whole rest of the algorithm. But, uh, uh, um, but anyway, but that's, that's how we're going to operate. So, um, okay. So that was our first step. Let me, um, yeah, I don't, um, sorry, I'm kind of trying to remember this sequence. So let's, <clears throat> so one comma two comma two, that was our, maybe I should, maybe it's better if I do this in orange, I don't know. So one comma two comma two, that was our initial sequence, but now we're ignoring that first term. So now we're just looking at the, which is why I've made it orange. So just the same as we were doing with the tree, now we're gonna omit that first term. We're no longer looking at that. Now we're looking at just the sequence two comma two, and we're repeating the same process. So with what's left of our sequence, we have two comma two. We are gonna look for the smallest unmarked vertex not appearing in that sequence. Well, that sequence only contains the number two. The smallest unmarked is therefore one. So what are we gonna do? Well, we're gonna take that smallest unmarked vertex. We're gonna add an edge between that and two, the first term in our present sequence, and then we'll mark that vertex. So what are we gonna do over here? We're gonna add an edge between, again, one, like our, our present sequence at this point in time is two comma two. We are gonna be adding an, so the smallest unmarked vertex not in this sequence is one. We're gonna add an edge from one to two and we're gonna mark one. And then we're gonna remove that first two from our sequence. So our new sequence is just gonna be a two. Okay, next step, same as before, we're gonna address this sequence. Well, it's a sequence just consisting of a single term two. And uh, we're going to look for the smallest unmarked vertex not appearing in that sequence. Well, one and three are already marked. Two appears in the sequence. The smallest unmarked vertex is therefore four. So I'm going to add an edge between four and this vertex two, and then I'm going to mark four. And then we're going to erase this term, and that brings us down to the empty sequence. Uh, but there's a special step for the empty sequence. After you've got down to the point where you've processed all the terms of the sequence, then there are going to be two unmarked vertices. Remember, we're, I've got n minus two terms in my sequence. Each time I'm processing one, I'm marking one of the vertices. Um, so I'm going to be um, marking n minus two vertices during those steps. At the end, I'm going to be down to just two unmarked vertices. And what we do is we add an edge between those two and then output that tree. So we're gonna add an edge between two and five, and then that's the tree that we will output. So as you can see, we've started with this uh, little tree with vertex at one, two, three, four, five. We've encoded it as the sequence one, two, two, and then it's decoded back to the same tree. So this is what proofer encoding and decoding do. Again, they are giving us a bijection between trees with vertex at one on up to n and sequences with uh, elements from that same set, one on up to n, but have but with length n minus two. And um, 
Right, and now we're going to prove that this thing is indeed giving us a, uh, a bijection as claimed. Now, um, well, let me say the theorem. So the theorem is going to be, uh, now I'm going to do this for any set S. And the theorem is going to be that proof for encoding and decoding are inverse bijections. These are inverse bijections between uh, vertices, sorry, vertices. Between trees with vertex set S and uh, sequences of length n minus 2 over S, <clears throat> or with elements of S. And um, <clears throat> And let's do the proof. So the proof is uh, uh, perhaps not surprisingly going to be induction, right? We we have a process that we are encoding, we're plucking a leaf, and as you can see, the the process is naturally recursive, right? At each stage, when we're when we're constructing our sequence, we are deleting a leaf and writing down the name of its neighbor, and then we're carrying on. So everything we do from that step on, it's a uh, uh, it's, it's, it's naturally recursive. We're just processing the same thing. And, and similarly with the, uh, with the proof for decoding. So the proof is going to be induction on n. Um, and uh, now I said n has to be at least 2. It's vital that n be at least 2 for this operation. So the base case is n equals 2. I don't know why I'm trying to save room. So the base case here is n equals 2, and n equals 2 is very easy. I, I mean, n equals 2, there's not much to say in either case. If I'm looking at trees with vertex set consisting of two elements, well, you know what that tree is. It's just got a single edge between them, right? That's getting processed, but we we don't even produce, we, I mean, we produce an empty sequence because we take that, that's the usual stopping point. You take that and you just output nothing. You output the sequ the empty sequence. And on the other side, well, once your sequence is empty, you you just add an edge between the, the, the two remaining uh, unmarked vertices. So it's just going to give you write, write the same thing back again. So uh, I'm not going to write anything for this, but this is a... Uh, um, this is this is immediate. This follows from the uh, uh, it follows easily from the description. I'll, I'll, I'll just say that the 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 unique tree encodes to this sequence and then decodes to itself. Okay, so that's the base case. Uh, so this works for n equals 2, and now we'll take the inductive step. So now uh, n is at least 3. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a tree, we're going to produce a sequence from it, and then we're so we're going to encode it to a sequence, then we're going to decode that to another tree. So we're going to let t be a tree with vertex set S, I'm going to let um, A1 on up to A n minus 2 be the encoding of T, and I'm going to let uh, T prime be the decoding of this sequence. Right, so we're going to play exactly the same game that you saw me do the example for. We're going to take, be taking a tree, encoding it to a sequence, decoding it back to a tree, and I want to verify that the 
the starting and ending tree are the same. This, this, isn't a, this doesn't quite do everything, but it does almost everything. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, 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 but, it, but it is exactly, well, it's exactly here that we see how and why everything works. And everything here is really, really very easy again. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, again, our tree has encoded to A1 up to AN minus 2. So what we know is that we know that the, we know a lot, we know that the leaf vertices of our tree are precisely the vertices not appearing in that sequence, right? <clears throat> so let's, um, let's let V be the smallest leaf of T. Then what we know is, well, V is, uh, since it's the smallest leaf, it, I mean, it's, it's, that means V is exactly the smallest, uh, the smallest, the smallest element of S not appearing in this sequence. So I want to note that V is smallest element of S that's not in our sequence. <clears throat> okay. Now, uh, the other thing I know, of course, is I, I know who V is adjacent to, right? Because my sequence encoded to A1 on up to AN minus 2, V is the smallest leaf. Well, that means there was an edge between V and A1. So my, uh, uh, so I'm going to run, run out of room. But in my tree T here, Here's the vertex V. It's, it's adjacent to A1, right? It's adjacent to A1. What we did when we were creating our sequence is we, again, V is the smallest leaf. We deleted the vertex V and we wrote down the name A1 and then we carried on. Uh, <clears throat> now, now let's think about this on the other side. Again, V is the smallest element of S not appearing in A1 on up to A sub N minus two. So let's now think about what happens when we go to decode it. Remember, when we go to decode, well, we're going to start with a, a, an, an empty graph with all the vertices in, with, with uh, uh, the vertex at S. What we're going to do is we're going to look for the smallest unmarked vertex that does not appear in our sequence. Well, that is necessarily the vertex V. Again, V is, you know, everything's unmarked at the start. V is the smallest uh, uh, unmarked, sorry, so V is going to be the smallest vertex not appearing in our, our sequence because it's the smallest leaf and the leaf vertices are the ones not appearing in the sequence. So, um, so V is going to be the first thing we, um, we, we operate with when we're doing the decoding. And what are we going to do when we do the decoding? Uh, sorry, I just don't know. It's a little hard to draw. I want to keep everything on the page at the moment. So again, here's the tree T, here's the vertex A1, and it's adjacent to V. When I encode this, this gets encoded into uh, A1 on, but there's going to be no V in this sequence. When I decode this, what I know is the very first step, my very first action is going to be to add an edge between V and A1. Right again, V is the smallest, uh, the smallest element not appearing in my sequence, so I'm going to add an edge between V and that first term A1, and then we're going to mark V. So then I'm going to add a little mark here for V, and that means we're never going to look at V ever again in the in the argument. Right. So again, what's happening? We're we're just really looking at the first vertex here, but uh, I, what I can see is. Well, V is the first vertex that's going to be deleted from the tree. We're going to write down A1. When we go, that's our encoding. Now, when we go to do our decoding, we're going to take that sequence that we got. And well, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look what's the smallest label not appearing in our sequence. Well, that's V. We're going to add an edge from V to A1 because A1 is the first term of the sequence. And then we'll mark V. And now everything else is basically going to go by induction. So now what's going to happen? Again, 
uh, uh, I know what's happening by induction. Let's think about the encoding of T delete V. Well, uh, sorry, the, the, the rest of the encoding. Well, when I deleted V, I, I made the first term A1 of my sequence, but the, the last N minus three terms of the sequence, that is precisely the encoding of T delete V. When we do our, our decoding step, well, my first step was to add the Z from V to A1, but then I mark V. So V is gone from the rest of, uh, uh, we're, we're never gonna look at it again. And from now on, we're decoding the sequence A2 on up to A n minus two. So the last, uh, I mean, this sequence of length n minus three now from A2 on up to A n minus two. That sequence is going to be, um, is, is going to be decoded into our tree. Uh, but so now I win by induction, right? So now, um, so, uh, uh, sorry, don't have more space to write. But now by induction, T delete V encodes to the sequence A2 on up to A n minus two and that decodes to what? It's, it's going to decode to, uh, to T prime delete V. <clears throat> oh, sorry, 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 sorry. Let me say that. Sorry, I, I was, I, I was, I, what I said isn't exactly wrong, but it's, it's, it's not quite the point. Uh, so again, T delete V encodes to A2 on up to A n minus two, and this decodes to what? Well, decodes to T prime delete V. <clears throat> Right. This is again. This is just by the nature of the algorithm. The algorithm tells us that when we're, you know, if you want to encode the tree T, well, you, the first thing you do is you delete the vertex V that's the smallest leaf. From then on, you're just encoding T delete V. So T delete V is going to encode to the to the tail of the sequence, all but everything but the first term. That uh, again, on the other side, when we're doing the decoding, well, if if initially you see a1 and V is the smallest vertex not appearing in your sequence. Then you add an edge from V to A1 and then you mark V. So V is out of consideration for the rest of time. And now the rest of your sequence, A2 on up to A n minus two, that's gonna decode into T prime delete V. So uh, so T delete V will be encoding in into this sequence and decoding into T prime delete V. Now the punchline is by induction, those two are equal. So these two are equal by induction. And, um, and, and there's where we hit this by induction, right? So again, T is gonna encode, sorry, T delete V is gonna encode to the tail of the sequence, everything but the first term. Everything but the first term of the sequence, we can, you know, by definition, by what we've chosen, it's going to decode into T prime delete V. So now we say induction. Well, induction is telling us that we had a bijection at the next smaller step. So T delete V and T prime delete V, those are going to be equal. And we can see that when we add the vertex back, when we add the, add the vertex B, V back, well, V is going to be a leaf and it's going to be adjacent to A1 in both cases. And so that tells us that T is equal to T prime. So we've just established that, uh, again, the, the thing that we saw a special case of works in general. If you take a tree with vertex set one up to N, it will encode into some sequence where, of length N minus two with elements uh, from the set one up to N. That will then decode to our original tree. This doesn't quite prove that we have a bijection yet, because there's some danger that the, the middle set is bigger, right? It might be that the trees encode here and then decode, but this set was actually much larger. Um, so in order to prove that, uh, um, that, that this thing is actually a bijection, we need one extra thing. We need to show that this, uh, this encoding is onto, that every sequence can be achieved, but this is also very easy. 
um, it's 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 really just immediate and it just follows the same in inductive argument. Uh, of course, it's trivial at the at the base. If I give you some sequence, if I give you any sequence, and we can make a tree that will achieve that sequence, and you know exactly what to do, you just uh, uh, you just take the um, take take the decoding of the thing. So if you want to make a tree with sequence a one on up to a n minus two you want your tree to encode to that sequence, well, you're going to choose the, the element that's smallest not appearing in your list. That's going to be the smallest leaf. You want to add an edge from that vertex to A1. And now you'll just win by induction. So now by induction, the, uh, the seek, there will exist some sequence Sorry, yeah, there, sorry, there will exist some tree that will encode to the remainder of your sequence, and then just putting that back with what you had initially gives you a, a tree that um, encodes to any given sequence. So you, you can also run this argument that, that you can also take this thing and go from sequence to T to back to sequence. Um, but, uh, right, and, and in a way, this, this induction is very, I mean, th 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 there's almost nothing to say with the induction. I mean, I think once you see this process working properly, then the the actual argument to it's really very trivial. Uh, but it is really nice and really useful. And so it, again, it has this nice power that it allows us to um, to think about trees with different kinds of structures and and, and this connection between trees and these sequences is, um, is, is, is really useful for understanding trees. So uh, I will just mention the one corollary now. Uh, yeah, so uh, that, I, I, mean, I, I was waving my hands here just because I didn't really feel like writing anything more. As usual, the proof appearing in the notes is more complete, but we've just checked that this, um, that these uh, um, encoding and decoding are indeed bijections, and, uh, and that's all there is to that. Let me just mention the, the corollary. Um, For every n at least two, there are uh, n to the n minus two trees. With vertex set uh, one on up to n. Um, so again, this is in that setting where, like technically speaking, if you have two trees with different edge sets, they cannot be equal. But here, uh, it's, it's understood that the edge set is implied. So. I'm considering, um, it, it, so if you want, just declare that one up to n is the vertex set. If you have an edge between i and j, that edge, it is the doubleton i comma j. So in that setting, then if we want to count trees with vertex set one on up to n, this theorem is telling us that they're n to the n minus two of them. Or another way of saying this, this is just exactly the same statement. Um, this is the same corollary, just version two of this. Uh, is just to say that Kn has uh, n to the n minus 2 spanning trees for n at least 2. Right, so here I'm, I mean, here I don't have to worry about names of anything. I'm just handing you a complete graph Kn. Well, Kn, it has spanning trees. What are they going to look like? Well, this is exactly the same question as we saw before. I mean, maybe it feels a little bit different, but it is exactly the same as before. Uh, I'm looking at spanning trees of Kn, so if the vertex set of my Kn is 1 on up to n, then um, uh, I'm going to end up with trees with that vertex set, and we're, we're counting. This is exactly what we counted as before. So, um, right. So anyway, so this is, this is Proofer's theorem, and it's giving us, again, this really nice connection between, uh, between trees and certain sequences. This is, this is just this is kind of a little taste of, uh, of the whole area in, in, in combinatorial theory, but it's, you know, I hope you appreciate this kind of builds a bridge, it builds a connection between trees and these, uh, these fairly simple structured objects, which are um, our sequences, and, uh, and I'll stop there.